is everyone in sales? Today we speak with Mark Kaplan, founder of Tribe Social Fitness, on his opinion about this topic. Mark, thank you for having a conversation with us today. Pleasure. This topic, everyone is in sales. <clears throat> Firstly, what is your opinion of salespeople? Well, first, I think salespeople, the, the word that pops into my head is critical. Like, they're the heartbeat of the business. If you don't have salespeople for your business, well, obviously, it's all, there's no sales. So, for me, the question is so obvious. Like, I think very highly of salespeople. I think they're needed. In my business, they're needed. Uh, and, you know, we deal with a lot of other businesses as well. In fact, I've actually got this lady that constantly comes into Tribe to sell her treadmills to us. And... I'm actually thinking to myself, she's super persistent. She's amazing though. Like for her company, she would sell lots of treadmills. You know, I think very highly of salespeople. So do you think sales is a necessary evil or critical business function then? Critical business function, heartbeat. Because for obvious reasons, like people, all businesses need continued sales. I don't know of any business that does not need the funnel to be wide open for more sales to come in. It's, it's, it's critical. Mark, you ran an incredibly successful business and businesses in the past. Yeah. Now, your team are an extension of you. How do you drive your ethos into them mm. so they can deal with your customers the way that you would deal with your mm. customers? It's a really good question. And for me, it's all in the recruitment process. So. Over the last six months, I've been looking for one uh, new personal trainer to come onto our team. I've interviewed 67 people to find that one person because for me, when I'm interviewing these people, they're just not extensions of me. They're not, they're not gonna carry our ethos. Not, they don't have our values, which is fun, passion, and care, as well as integrity. So it's interesting, Like, I, if I get the wrong person, I can't get them to believe in my ethos or my way or be an extension of me. It's actually, I've never achieved that. So for me, it's key at the beginning is recruitment. So this is the way our interview process works. We have um, obviously a structure toward it and I ask all of the relevant questions and everyone, they all nod their head and they all say the right things. And then I will employ someone. My point here is the real interview process is the three month probationary period. Do you know what I mean? Like people will lie in interview, interview processes and I just watch them for the first three months. And the amount of people that tried that have not got through our first three month probationary period is what sets our culture. You've got quite an extensive team here, Mark, from the reception team to your PT team, and I'm sure you've got other people as well. Do you think sales is reserved to people just with the title? So we have 11 personal trainers, and then we have three other uh, team members at Tribe in sales, but we actually have 14 people in sales, obviously. So we have the three people who are in sales who, you know, they'll do the transaction, they'll, they'll make the sale, they'll seal the deal, however you want to call it. However, in a service-based business with our 11 trainers, they're, they're selling our service all the time. And if they are not on, the three salespeople can't sell the product. So effectively, everyone in our team, 100% are salespeople. Mark, you've got quite a strong social following, plus your client base. Do you see that your followers and your clients are an extension of your sales team? Yeah, I will definitely. Like, we have our sales team who lead generate in all the traditional ways that we obviously do lead generation. But the, the biggest, I guess, the most strongest lead generator for us is our customer base. So we have a certain amount of members here at Tribe and we're always looking to incentivize them to bring in the next form of them because that's what really strengthens our membership base is like the referrals, like it's huge for us. They're a big extension of our sales team and we harness that and we use it to the best of our advantage and we reward our members for you know, bringing their friends in as well. Why wouldn't you not? It's like a huge, it's a huge asset. But again, like if we're, if all of our trainers are doing the right thing with their service, selling, doing the right thing, it's easier for the member to go and tell their friend Sally, hey, come down and try. Amazing. Yeah. Mark, you've running a great and successful career, but like with many other businesses, COVID has really impacted the way we do mm. business. What do you think is the future of sales mm. in your industry? I think the future of sales is, is understanding and being super aware that sales and customer service are gonna sit hand in hand going forward. For example, so what is it now, August 2020, we've just been through a fair bit of turmoil with COVID. Prior to COVID, if one of our members said, oh, excuse me, can you please tell us where the change rooms are? Um, I might say, oh yeah, look, just 
that way. But now it's almost a little bit like, come and I'll show you and I'll take you there because I feel like the actual level of customer service going forward, combined with lots of competition in our industry, is gonna to have to be at the forefront of every business going forward to have successful sales, but also understanding that that high level of customer service feeds straight into sales, really important. Mark, it's been incredible having a conversation with you today. Um, everyone is in sales, that's what we believe, and mm. from what you've told us, everyone is in sales here too. Thank you so much for your time today, and we wish you all the best. My pleasure, sales, critical part of any business. Thank you.